Hey guys, today we are going to talk about MTG Finance, some of the ups and downs. I'm going to commit more towards this format where instead of having one card, I will talk about multiple cards and we will have a longer discussion about each of them, kind of where the mindset is. I did want to take the MTG Finance part of this channel a little bit more seriously and I'll still have a video on something that I'm interested in magic, but for my subscribers, let's go ahead and try it out a little bit. So instead of having one card and telling, oh, this card has spiked this much money, uh, we will have a longer video with multiple cards being shown and the cards being shown will depend on the day and what is spiking. So this card spiked last night up to 100, it went down to 45. The key on this card and the one thing that you would take away from this is it cannot be a $45 card. The Commander 2015 deck with 99 other cards and big foil versions of the cards, which probably are worth something, they are, it is not $45, it is not $100. This is from a Commander 2015 deck. Uh, and the this reminds me a lot of what was happening with Mind Seas. There was a time where Mind Seas was in extremely limited supply and everyone was after one card, True Name Nemesis. Uh, True Name Nemesis was a very good card in Legacy at the time, but it was only found in that pre-con or the pre-constructed deck. Now what happened was people went to Target, they went to Kmart, they went to Barnes Nobles and they purchased this deck. They would sell the one card, keep the other 99 and actually make a profit from just selling that one card. This is what it reminds me of it's not going to last. You can get the entire deck online for less than $45 right now. Now, if people were going to try to buy that deck out, that would be interesting, but I feel like just given the distribution network, it's in Walmart, it's in Kmart, it's in Barnes and Nobles, it's in Target, and they are still sitting on these shelves. Like It's in your local game store. I just don't see this keeping the price up, mainly because of what it is and it is a commander card and a commander deck, which everyone, there's no possibility of not getting this card if you buy the correct deck. Well, I mean, maybe at Walmart where people would steal the card, right? But most of the times you should get the card from the deck so it's not a randomness factor. And when you don't have randomness in play, then it's hard to establish a value. But again, going from $2 to $100, that is pretty good feat. The other card we're going, the other one of the other cards we are going to look at. Wow, I almost stopped the video. <laughs> Seismic Assault, and we all know why this card went up. I made a video about that deck. Uh, the deck has been, I mean, people are experimenting with the deck. I like it. There's Zombie Hunt, but now there's Seismic Hunt, and Seismic Hunt is very similar to Zombie Hunt, except you can kill your opponent right there and you're not giving your opponent the ability to board wipe on their turn, which Zombie Hunt has a problem with, unless you can give your zombies haste. Overall, I like the deck. I think it's one of the cheaper decks, given the fact it has 42 land, right? And I mean, with 42 land in it, and not all of the lands being fetch land, shock lands are very pricey, then it makes a lot of sense why this card has gone up in price. People want to play a fun deck, People want to try something a little new, a little different, and playing 42 lands with 18 cards is different. The overall deck is pretty cheap. I think the last time I made a video about it, it was $72. So when you're talking about what can spike in it, you have Treasure Hunt at Common, which is the namesake. And then you have this card at the rare slot from A for Disson. So there is a 10 for Disson one. It looks like that one is $7. A 7 for Disson one is a dollar that I don't think that's right because the 7th edition one is still playable and modern. I guess the 8th and 10th edition ones just look a little bit better or they are less confusing for your opponent. Regardless, uh, good card. Definitely it has spiked because it has seen play. It has seen a lot more play than it used to see. And I do like the deck. The deck has 42 lands, 18 other cards, and the 18 cards are not necessarily expensive. Now, one of the other cards that I kind of feel like this is very good in ED8s, but kind of don't feel like it is, depends on your playgroup, Pain's Reward. 
This card is only from Saviors of Kamigawa, and it has gone up a ton in price, from $0.41 cents to $6. I didn't even know this card existed. Um, a lot of times when a card spikes in price, you kind of look at it and it's like, oh, I could have purchased that card. I, I was looking at the card. But this is one of those cards that I didn't really look at. So what does it actually do? It's two in a black uh, sorcery. You bid any amount of life uh, in turn order. Each player uh, tops the high bid. And then it's essentially you're bidding for life. What do you get? You get um, to draw that many. You get to draw four cards and the higher bidder loses life equal to the high bid. So if I bid 10 life, then I'm bidding 10 life, spending two in a black and drawing four cards, which doesn't seem that great. Uh, in my play group, yeah, we're gonna draw cards because we are all combo deck. We will bid life. And the player who plays this, tempo-wise, is, is not really in that great of a spot because they just wasted their turn and someone will bid a lot of life to draw those cards. Now, in EDH, depending on your playgroup, if your playgroup is really cool and casual, then this is two and a black for four cards. Four cards is a lot of cards. Uh, the only other card I would actually play in EDH is Mediation or Meditation. I, wow, Mediation. Uh, meditation, and that one draws four, but you skip your next turn, so you got to win out right there of your combo deck. So in a combo deck, this probably is good enough. Um, if you have more life than your opponent. Or, I mean, I don't see a scenario where someone is not going to bid life on this, right? Anyway, those are the top three cards that have gone up in price. We obviously have seen some random spikes, and it's interesting to know. I won't make a video like this every day, but when there's enough activity and the activity is interesting enough, I will make a summary video of what's happening in the marketplace. So essentially, you got a card in a commander deck, worth more than a commander deck. You have a card being played in a 42 land deck. And lastly, you have a card that may be EDH gold, but it depends on your play group. Like if your play group is really nice and like my play group, if I play Rhystic Tutor, depending on what everyone else is playing, sometimes they will not pay the two and let me tutor for a card I need. And in fact, that makes Rhystic Tutor worth playing. And this is very similar to that where you get to draw four cards, uh, assuming that you just bid one life, no one bids more than you, and everyone's really friendly, then four cards for two and a black is a very, very, and one life is a very, very good deal. But I just don't see that happening in my play group very often. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye.